Hello and welcome to Femme de Chem Chats. I'm Kit, your host with your weekly musings on life, the universe, but mostly on disability. This week I'm going to be talking about cooking gadgets and people with disabilities because able-bodied people tend to label different types of gizmos and gadgets for the kitchen as being made for lazy people and this has bothered me for some time. This subject gets rolled around on disabled Twitter every once in a while, and that's because there's so many products out there that get mislabeled by people who are able-bodied as being for lazy people, or more frequently, for those lazy millennials. <laughs> Crippled Scholar actually wrote an article about this back in March, which I will link in the description, uh, and it was in response to a tweet that went viral. And in this tweet, there was an image of peeled oranges in a plastic container on the shelf on in a grocery store I happen to be Whole Foods and the tweet read if only we could find a way to cover these oranges so we didn't need to waste so much plastic on them and in the article Crippled Scholar points out that pre-prepared food actually increases food accessibility for a lot of people with disabilities, and she would be correct. Food prep is hard for a lot of different types of disabilities because food prep requires strength and fine motor control and larger motor control and use of eyes and ears. Before the blind and deaf communities come after me in the comment section, yes, it's possible for blind, deaf, and deafblind people to be independent in the kitchen. If you are deaf, you can be a professional chef. If you are blind and that is your ambition, have at it. However, the cooking techniques that you use in the kitchen are not going to be taught in your average cookbook. Uh, so things like, it's not gonna tell you to use a talking timer or a flashing timer or to put up mirrors so you can look up and see if there's someone behind you. This, these aren't things that an average cookbook or cooking class are going to teach you. Some common things that blind people use in the kitchen uh, that sighted people don't really think about are things like George Foreman grills, toaster ovens instead of ovens, something called a hot shot which allows you to boil water in the exact quantities you need it. So if you just need a mug of water, you can pour a mug of water and it heats up that amount. So you don't have to worry about pouring and figuring out how much water is in the cup, because for a lot of people that's very difficult, uh, especially for people with multiple disabilities, they can guess, this can get challenging. Um, things like pre-cut fruits and vegetables is also really important. Again, yes, it, it can be safe and is safe for, for a blind person to cook in the kitchen, but not everyone can master those techniques, and some people have multiple disabilities, and there's a lot of reasons that they might need pre-cut vegetables. I prefer them because it takes me forever to cut things without cutting my fingers and so that's why I use them. Crock pots are also a great appliance for people who are blind because they are very easy to use. They have dials instead of digital displays or can and they you don't have to check on them. You, you really, there's, very, there's very little maintenance involved. So it's a great tool for people who are blind who also want to have good healthy diets. This is specific to the Orthodox Jewish community for me, but in our community what we do is we need to check our leafy greens for bugs and we do this by putting it under a light and going through it and looking for bugs. I obviously can't do this because I can't see very well, so one of the ways that I kind of deal with this is I buy pre-bagged lettuce that has been pre-washed and it comes with a little kosher symbol. And I've heard people in my community laugh at why this exists and why can't you just check it yourself and oh it's for lazy people. Or it's for people like me who literally can't check their vegetables. And it's important because if I didn't have access to these this bagged lettuce with the kosher symbol it would be much harder for me to be able to have fresh produce and I would need to come up with a different system. Labeling something because you don't personally see a use for it as something being made for lazy people creates a false narrative that there's only one right way to do things and that's not true. It's also 
damaging to people who are getting used to a new disability because nobody wants to be seen as being lazy. So if you say, oh, that hot shot, that's for lazy people who don't feel like putting on a kettle, like a full kettle of water, that blind person might be like, oh, well, I don't want to be, I don't want to be seen as being lazy. I guess I'll just try to boil a full thing of water and try to just, you know, do it this other way, even if that's not the best way for them. It, it can make you very self-conscious when you don't need to be. People should buy what they need, not what other people think they need. That was today's episode of Femme the Chem Chats. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, follow on Twitter, like on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram. Uh, tell me about in the comment section what techniques you're using. And remember to use the hashtag cookingwhiledisabled. You can also use that on Twitter. And I've been trying to get that started. So if you all want to pick that up, go for it.